So for more on Saturday's big night, we welcome in the man himself, ESPN MMA reporter Ariel Helwani. So good to have you right here in studio, my friend. Thank you. All right, so Cejudo Dillashaw. Love Dillashaw, but Cejudo is such a character, man. I yes. got to say, he's got the big upset win last August, your upset of the year. That's right. But he has trouble making weight, as I understand. Yeah, well, that was early in his career. And when he actually first was scheduled to make his UFC debut, he missed weight and actually didn't fight. And his coach, Eric Abarasin, told me recently that Cejudo quit that night, mm. quit MMA. Wow. And he convinced him, no, you still have more work to do. You're an Olympic gold medalist. Do not quit on this dream. So if it wasn't for that conversation, maybe we're not talking about Henry Cejudo, flyweight champion. It's amazing. And look at where he is now. Yeah. But this fight, what I find so interesting is it could affect the future of this yes. flyweight division. This is sort of a secret not being talked about. I don't think the promoters want us to talk about mm -hmm. it. But here's the truth. The UFC wants to get rid of the flyweight division, the 125 pound weight class, Why? because they're they so believe excited. that it's just not marketable, that they're not selling wow. tickets, that they don't sell pay per views, and the ratings aren't high when they fight. They had a man named Demetrius Johnson as champion for many years, and the fans, for whatever reason, didn't gravitate towards him. However, DJ loses in August to Henry Cejudo, and they viewed that, okay, as the beginning of the end. In fact, they traded DJ to an organization in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And so they're bringing TJ Dillashaw from 135 down to 125 to essentially phase this out. Henry believes that if he wins on Saturday, he will keep this division around. It will survive. And in fact, he has told me that fighters in his weight class, 125, have come up to him and said, I don't like you. I want to fight you, but on Saturday I'm rooting for you because I feel like you're fighting for my job as well. That's unbelievable stakes. That's bigger than a belt, in my opinion. I can't, I, I can't even imagine it's crazy. competitors going up to you saying, basically, please save our division. Please yeah. save my livelihood. But that's what's at stake. That's what's at stake. And not only that, so if Cejudo wins and he's beating the 135 champion who's coming down, he then believes that he'll get a shot to fight for his belt at 135. So there's all kinds of drama going wow. on. And this is a pay-per-view level fight. Yes, it's going to air on ESPN+. Plus. They're kicking off the partnership in a very big way. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake about it, like this is a very big fight. This is one of the best fights that the UFC is going to put on in 2019. Incredible. The other storyline here, Greg Hardy. Now. Yes. For those who follow football, we look at Greg Hardy and the conversation has been, wow, he's going to fight on this card. He's going to fight on the same card as Ostevich. She went through abuse. You saw her saying, hey, I'm focused on my fight, not on him. For us, we think, well, there's going to be controversy. That's the assumption. What's the reality when it comes to how UFC and its fans look at Greg Hardy? So when I first found out that the UFC was signing 3-0 Greg Hardy, with his history, with his checkered past, I thought this was going to be a PR nightmare, mm. to be quite honest with you. It hasn't been, and the fans haven't been all up in arms. In fact, they often tell me, quite frankly, to stop talking about his past because they don't know who Greg Hardy is. MMA fans live in a bubble. They're not very familiar with his past. You and I, sports fans, we know what he did and what he was accused and convicted of. And I believe that Greg Hardy, while he may have a future in this sport, while he has shown signs of being a pretty solid fighter with raw skills, he's not UFC caliber. He has fought three times as a professional. None of his fights have gone past 60 seconds. He's never fought a UFC caliber fighter. They're putting him on this card because it's the debut card on ESPN. I don't believe that he has earned this spot. And quite frankly, as I said earlier today, I feel like it was a tone-deaf decision to put him on the same card as Rachel Ostevich because keeping Rachel on the card after everything she's been through was a great story, an uplifting story. Mm -hmm. She is a role model to a lot of women, and she has told me a lot of women have reached out to her and said, we are inspired by what you're doing. Putting Greg into this card and combining the two stories, I think, is unfair to her. Okay, and speaking of Rachel, real quick, I have a couple seconds left. Between Rachel and Paige Van Zandt, who do you think wins? And if Van Zandt loses, what happens to her? Well, this is a very big fight for Paige Van Zandt. She's coming off a year-long layoff. She is the more well-rounded fighter. I think this is a fight that is sort of primed for her to win. She needs to get back on track. She's lost two in a row. And I think that the UFC would like to have her win. She is probably a little more popular, Star. if you will. But she is now fighting in a more natural weight class. She was fighting at 115 for a long time. That took a toll on her body. Now she's fighting at 125, so I expect to see a better Paige Van Zandt from here on out. All right, it's going to be interesting. Appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate Thank your you. candor, Oh, too. yes, it is really my honor. Great to Thank talk you so to much. You. Can't wait to see Saturday. Can't wait to see you as part of that coverage. You do a great job, my Thank friend. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. And by the way, don't forget, UFC Fight Night card Saturday night, Barclays Center. Got to catch it on ESPN+. Plus. The coverage starts at 6 p.m. Eastern on Plus, and then you can catch the fights at 8, beginning, on, beginning at 8 on ESPN. Talking Sehudo Dillashaw at 10 also on ESPN+. Plus. It is going to be a great night for fights.